It's like, how do I know the voice of the father or Jesus in prayer? And I just use a simple example of, okay, like if your mom were to call you on the phone, and this is pre cell phones and caller IDs and stuff like that, right? Um, because now we look at our phone, we just know instantly who's calling. But let's say for instance, you're blindfolded and right handed the phone and then she started talking or your dad, somebody like very close to you. You wouldn't need them to say, hey, this is so-and-so talking. Like you, you know their voice instantly. Um, and so that happens because you've been with them, you've spoken with them, they said things to you, you said things back to them. And so the same way is true with God. Like if we're able to be in that place and listen and see what happens after that, then that's a place where we can, okay, I recognize the voice of the Father because there are real things happening that I don't feel like driven to do something or I don't feel like I'm on this place of peace, especially when I pray about this thing or especially when I've moved in this particular way and things have come in a peaceful way. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, I'm Father Mark Mary. What's going on, everybody? I'm Father Innocent. What's going on, I'm Father PT? Edgy Father Innocent today. <laughs> today he's <laughs> spicy. <laughs> that is not true. Kyle Pepper sprinkled on his forehead. <laughs> Speaking of forehead, you had some wrinkles on your forehead. I know. They actually not, get went out. They're not from my pillow, just so we're clear. <laughs> they're from my hat. For those of you who have started listening in the last three months, you may not know who Father Pierre Toussaint is. <laughs> welcome. Father PT, welcome myself. back. Thank you. Thank you. People have missed you. We've missed you. I've I, missed being here. Were you on our, you, you were on Ash Wednesday, I think? I was on Ash Wednesday. Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and hasn't think, been with us for about six weeks. I think I was the first week too. Yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, you the first you, week too. Yeah, All yeah. right, take it back. Take it back. Sonship, you were, you okay. were holding strong for <laughs> Sonship. <laughs> Uh, well, good to have you back. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be back. We had a strong March podcast wise, as Thanks far God. as like listeners. Um, so thanks again, Jake and David for being with us and it's awesome. Core and all that. So for instance, just before we go too quickly, how was uh born of fire? How that yeah, whole thing so go? I, again, I am so grateful that we could just go through the book on, on the podcast, but also just really accompany guys through Lent. It was, it was pretty incredible. Um, the, just the fact that the book sold out and that we were uh, we were close to probably on on 30 college campuses with men, men's groups and things like that i was able to do some pretty consistent um like zoom meetings with college campuses which again just meant, meant a lot to me but it was really beautiful that guys were really praying and guys were going deeper and and so it's it's pretty humbling to 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 like meet a guy um and and have him kind of engage kind of your i've never writ- written a book before i'd never I would never thought that I would. And, and uh, so it was just a new experience for me to people that were people were really interiorizing and going deeper. And you can see that how the Lord was using it. And I'm like, oh man, like people are hungry and thirsty and for this. And so I just hope that it was a beautiful experience of people being blessed in their identity and, and just receiving the deeper truth about their, their sonship. So mm-hmm. it's pretty incredible. I'm super humbled and grateful. And so maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll see what God does for next year. Yeah, I think definitely the, the response was like kind of like surprisingly positive. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it's, it's sold out. It's sold out before. <laughs> not, a not a complete idiot. Not, huh? <laughs> surprisingly positive. But it's like, you know, there's like, oh, okay. <laughs> like people liked trash. it, you know, it's <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <clears throat> okay. And then it's like, oh, like there's 30 something groups meeting and mm-hmm. we're at mm-hmm. wherever, Annapolis Naval Academy and Air, Air Force, Force Academy and a yeah. and and Auburn. And where else? Where are some bigger... Yeah, so UL, we want to talk to our UL. We want to give a shout out to our, we have, our, we have the mugs. The best mug ever. <laughs> we'll come back to this. And we have Drake and we had Wichita State and we had uh, UConn and we had some some Ivy League schools, I think were in there as well. Oh, Harvard. Yeah, yeah. Harvard had a big group. And uh, Northern Colorado, Assumption up north in uh, New Hampshire, West Virginia. Did Eastern Washington get on Eastern there? Washington. Oh yeah, Stephen DeBold, the guys were faithful over there at West. So just a lot of, just a lot of great, I mean, our connection was was through focus, particularly. Mm-hmm. So, those guys were just really faithful in it. So, just again, just really grateful. I definitely pulled a rat, <laughs> Father Mark Mary Ramu, <laughs> and it, it, it worked. It, it was amazing. Why are, are we supposed to be surprised? Um, but you know, it's I'm for the gospel. It's, it is for the gospel. <laughs> it's for the gospel. <laughs> it's we did, you know, send like a email to all the male focus missionaries. Mm-hmm. 
but hey, yeah, we and say, hey, in listen, it. we hey. believe in it, and hey, we want to, we want to accompany you. Do, do you want, do you want us to help you? Do you want us to serve your guys? I get, I get there, like, hey, support us. Emails, yeah, you know, dude, mm-hmm. I get one. I'm it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a sequel in place, like Burning Man on fire? Really, really? I just, I just want to make a man on fire joke. <laughs> <laughs> I was so like, funny. I'm lit. I'm That's lit. Sick. Get lit. <laughs> get lit. 2023. I think that might have different connotations. Actually, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. It's not all bad. Maybe. No. Sorry if it means something bad. We don't know. We're friars. We. I'm, I'm back. Bring yeah, bad totally things on the podcast. Scandalous PT. And, and before kind of getting into our episode here on discernment, Father PT, any updates of your life that we need to know about? Uh, we need to know about no, but I'll share. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just on mission the past the past couple of weeks in Lent and. Uh, Went out to St. Jude the Apostle in Clearwater, Florida. It's very on. good. Father Pruel. I hope maybe you're listening to this. Shout out to <laughs> Father Pruel and the people there. Um, no, but it's just a blessed time whenever we're able to go out on mission just to, to be with people. Um, and yeah, it's just a good, good, good opportunity to, to preach and, and support the parish at different levels. And so, and then as also too at the Friary, we did a local mission in New York here at Curie of Ours in Merrick. And so, um, yeah, it's just a good time. And Long just, Island? Strong Island. Uh, but it's a busy season. Like mm-hmm. more so, Lent is more so busy. We had college group come visit from Steubenville. Shout out to uh, those that came to the Bronx from Steubenville. And uh, just kind of been going. And so, yeah, it's just been a, a good time, busy time. But setting my hand to the plow and not looking back. Yeah, dude, keep going. You know, because I'm on yeah. fire. <laughs> we, have two, we have, I think, two more weeks. And then, in, so this week, two more episodes. And then after that, the whole band will be back together. Right. Well. Good to be back. Thank it's you for be being back. here. Thanks for inviting me yeah, back. Yeah. Thanks for having me be a part of this Don't part of your lives. <laughs> yeah, you make it there's, a, there's a long list of shout outs, I think, at the end of this episode. But um, before that, we're going to get into and talking about discernment. I have kind of a particular... Sorry. What are you doing, <laughs> bro? This is all over you and <laughs> pulling on me when you move and so... Do you think that was good discernment to ruin the podcast episode? <laughs> I think it was great discernment. <laughs> this thing kept pulling on my ear. It could have came off. I could have like put my head on his shoulder because it pulled. Anyway. See? <laughs> See? Uh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, it's not. <laughs> pull his, pull, pull his if you want to get his attention. <laughs> you want to get his attention. It's like pull on his cord. <laughs> yeah. You say something. Shut up. Or if you want him to like, hey, stop PT, talking. Come on, bro. <laughs> oh, you don't make it pull, come out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, it's it's in there. It's it's uh, yeah yeah. Um, so we're gonna talk about this. I have a very particular angle. I want to go on it, Father. Uh, what what are you right now? Spicy Father Innocent, <laughs> edgy, edgy Father Innocent. Sort of said you're, not, you're doing it wrong. So I, we'll see what I didn't say we'll, that. We'll see where this episode you just goes. Leave. <laughs> um, but before that, again, we just we thank you for <clears throat> your kindness and generosity towards the podcast. That's it, uh, there's a lot that goes into it, and we're grateful for your support particularly financial support if you can offer that and to continue to help you can go to spiritjuice.org forward slash poco a poco um we're not i mean we're not quite actually at hitting our monthly cost so that'd be super helpful and um what else we have going on if you want to watch the video we're on youtube and you can subscribe to get it every week sweet i think that's all right yeah that's great doing great I'm trying to be like less weird. Like well, Rob told me to say subscribe. I'm just like, man, hey, we need you to say, if you want to subscribe, we're pretty <laughs> we need you too. Yeah, I'm trying not to be in, insecure about it. So here's here's the here's the point I want to make. Mm. And then you guys who are both formators, I'm not a formator. Mm. Father, father, no, just leave it to me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> father Innocent, the postulant <laughs> director, the, the formator of all of all men. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, fire. <laughs> the formator, the formator um, of all men. The self-proclaimed um, no, a, master formator of the that world. That is not true. Oh, you I'm said not, that before the show. It's literally on a sign on your door. Yeah. You said, bro, I'm going to form every single guy in the world. Better than anybody else has ever done before. And that's why part of the spiciness we're bringing up right now. Like, that's kind you of ridiculous. Big, that's kind of a big You should claim. talk. You should introduce this type <laughs> subject. He didn't say that just for the record. Yeah. yeah. So here, because this comes up and here's like a little caveat. This is responding to patterns, not to particulars, meaning this. Mm is you mm-hmm. might have talked to me or you might have talked to Father Innocent or you might have talked to Father PT and you might have shared one of these situations. We're not, we're not putting you on blast. We're not just like airing your dirty laundry. This is because this type of question has come up in a lot of different categories <clears throat> over the years. And so it is something that, you know, we're not going to talk to this whole audience to talk or not create a whole podcast episode to talk to like one person. Like this is because it's a broad thing that's like a whole Catholic issue. And so it, it, the question is this, is, is, ca- is like, how do we actually understand like what proper discernment according to like a Catholic worldview and Catholic spirituality, right? And we have to balance these two, these two truths. 
like number one, the truth that God is speaking to us. God wants to speak to us. He can. He He is speaking to us. He's spoken to us throughout history, and that's. I kind of still find that I still your point. Is that why you're smirking? No, no you, you can come. That's <laughs> good. I, I, that's why I did steal water. But you're gonna. You have examples. Yeah, we do. Oh, we have do. Examples. We do. Oh, just you're doing your thing. You got <laughs> it. I'm able to adjust mid. mid whatever. Oh, that's my son. I'm just gonna <laughs> all PT stories. I'm stealing. Um, and then also though, but it's but we. It's not just like I'm not infallible in myself, and I don't have absolute security and surety of the Lord's voice in my, just, just me and him, right? So I can hear something, but as Catholics, we also understand a communal uh, component to discernment, a part of discernment, which requires life to actually happen, like to test things. And also which submits ultimately our discernment to kind of uh, right authority, right? For us, that's very clear with spiritual direction, obedience um, for children with parents, there is a dynamic of it within marriage. And then ultimately to our, our pastors, our bishops, our church, right? Okay. Um, so, so like, I'm going to lay out some examples and then I'm going to kick it to Father Innocent, whether, like, if you want to just, I'm just going to give some examples and then, because you were, Father Innocent was saying we have to, there's some, there's some fundamentals, some like, what yeah. did you call it? Well, I just said some building blocks, but I, yeah. some building you, blocks. You got them all, a lot of them out there, but I'll, I'll just reiterate and, and we'll. Okay. Because I think, so they're, they're like the, the basic principle that we want to communicate is that there is, yes, God is speaking to me, but also there's a, a way in which I need to submit my discernment towards these things outside of myself. And, and in particular, like how we understand God speaking to me, there's a lot, that's like, that's, there's a lot of depth and components to that, which we have to understand, right? Um, so here, like some, some examples, it's like, pretend I'm, like I, I meet a girl at the young adult group, right? And, and my, my, my desire is to be a husband, to be married, I meet this girl. I've been like praying, uh, whatever. It's like the ninth day of a, of a novena. Mm. Perfect. Yeah, ninth day of a yeah. novena, right? And I meet her and it's like, oh, she's like, and she's, she has a scapular on. And yeah, and scapular. And, she, and you were doing the St. Therese novena and you got a rose. Yeah, 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 yeah. She has a rose on her sweatshirt yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and she's a North Carolina Tar Heel fan. Like I'm a, you know, whatever, I'm you a, know? I'm a Tar Heel fan. Um, it's, oh, this must, like, this is like, there's so many signs. This must be God's will. You date for four months. And then she breaks up with you. And it's like, well, I mean, God, like, God, like, was this not your will? Like, was I not hearing you? Um, like, why would you have brought this girl into my life if we weren't supposed to get married? And so it's like, okay, how do I understand that? Um, in, another example is I, I feel subjectively called to enter seminary. I feel called to a particular religious community. And I reach out and I feel this desire. And it's like, I just know Jesus is calling me. And they say, we don't think it's a good fit or you join and you're part of this community or the seminary for two years or three years. And then it's just like, actually, I, you either get asked to leave, you don't have the capacity. It's like, okay, Lord, like, wh- like, are you just playing games with me? Like, did I not hear your voice? Was, was this all some sort of weird test, right? Um, and what's at stake with it, right, is like, if why it's really important as, as Catholics that we have a right understanding of the sermon is because if we, th- we can end up like really kind of, um, compromising our capacity to trust God. If mm-hmm. we think that we're hearing his voice or responding in a way which we're not. And it's like, you're, you can be attributing something to him mm-hmm. that's not actually of him. And then you get mad at him for something that he's not actually doing. And it's like, can we, and we want to avoid that. Okay. Um, so those, those are kind of some of, if you will, the problems we want to look, we want to try and sort of address some basics where we're trying to go. Father Instant, what, what yeah, it's got? great. I mean, I, I like those examples a lot because we just throw them out there and we can kind of we can kind of build an, a proper way of responding and, and experiencing those things. I think the just to go on what you said about that from the beginning of time, God has a desire to speak and to come close to His people, and and this is again, this is what we talk about all the time: the gift of relationship that we're made to live in a relationship where two people speak to one another, and so that's just true. And so again, that should that should um we should just have a holy reverence for that, that we can actually, I mean, think of that. We actually can hear God, that, mm-hmm. that God wants to communicate himself to us. But I think what we have to be careful of is that I think in this day and age with like immediate kind of gratification and immediate desires to like know things is that we can often oversimplify just like, oh, well, I desire this. So this is what God wants. Or, oh, you, you know, it just, it's a lot of, 
it's a lot of what is, is kind of still self-focused. I have my own life. I have these things. And so I kind of, I kind of project on God and just be like, oh, this must be his will because, you know, I want this or I want that or thing. Yeah. So I think we can just oversimplify. And I think what we, what we want to do here is just get out some, some basic tools to, for us to start being sensitive to how God speaks in my life and, and how I receive that and how I, we use the word discern. It's, it's, it's a word that's like often overused or mis, misinterpreted, but how do I go about in my daily experience of life? Like discernment doesn't just happen in my own personal prayer time or kind of in my own mind. Mm -hmm. Like it's actually incarnational. Like it's the stuff of life that I begin to, you know, to just experience, like how is God working? Right. And how to, again, how do we submit that to your family, your spouse, how to submit that to, you know, a local priest, a spiritual director, or even the church, right? Like we discern some things, but the church is done discerning on some. We're not discerning morality. Like these things the church has given us, like this is right and this is wrong, right? So how did letting, letting the church guide us and, and speaking the truth in us, it, to us is also, I think, just helpful. Um, yeah, so I guess the thing that I wanna say is, is we have to grow in sensitivity to what God's voice sounds like, what our voice sounds like, and what the voice of the world or the voice of the enemy sounds like, right? So we just have to, again, it's a gen, more of a general thing than like these particular um, circum or, uh, examples. But I do think, again, that's a very IPF, mm -hmm. we've been trained by IPF, but um, very Ignatian sort of way of entering the Catholic worldview and discernment is that we, we have to grow sen and grow in sensitivity to what God's sound voice sounds like in my life and a sensitivity to actually what my voice sounds like, right? I'm not God, right? Like I don't get to, I don't get to like project on God, my voice, my desires, my feelings all the time. Like, what does my voice sound like? And be like, oh man, okay. I know that's coming from me or, and, and it's okay, but it's not, but to know that it's, it's maybe not God, maybe not the Holy Spirit movement here. Or what does the voice of the world sound like or the voice of the enemy or, or different spirits that are pulling us away? So when she's like, oh, when there's a, um, like you guys have experienced at the beginning of this episode, when there's like a biting spirit or like a, 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 a spirit that lacks fraternity Whoa, or kind right. of <clears throat> making fun of people or things like that. I, it's like not, it's not of the Lord. <laughs> are, I'm, I'm untrained in these things. I feel like <laughs> there's shots being taken right now. So I haven't, I haven't gone to the IPF yet. I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I can't discern what you were saying. <laughs> okay, that was a joke. So anyway, so there's spirits that come in and there are other voices that take yeah. us away of like not being faithful to the Lord or to the church or, um, or, or, or like there's a, there's a spirit of distraction or confusion. Is that, that, whoa, that's not of the Lord. How do I, you know, or, or spirit of pride. Mm -hmm. So these voices pull us away and we just have to be sensitive. So I think that's a part of the Catholic worldview of discernment is that we grow in our sensitivity to start understanding how these, how these different voices work in, in our lives. Yeah. Thank you. And it's uh, like the example I love using when talking about that in particular with people who are discerning or it's people in general, it's like, how do I know the voice of the father or Jesus in prayer? And I just use a simple example of, okay, like if your mom were to call you on the phone, and this is pre-cell phones and caller IDs and stuff like that, right? Um, because now we look at our phone, we just know instantly who's calling. But let's say, for instance, you're blindfolded and we're handed the phone, and then she started talking, or your dad, somebody like very close to you. You wouldn't need them to say, hey, this is so-and-so talking. Like you, you know their voice instantly. Um, and so that happens because you've been with them, you've spoken with them, they said things to you, you said things back to them. And so the same way is true with God. Like if we're able to be in that place and listen and see what happens after that, then that's a place where we can, okay, I recognize the voice of the father because there are real things happening that I don't feel like driven to do something or I don't feel like I'm on this place of peace, especially when I pray about this thing or especially when I've moved in this particular way and things have come in a peaceful way. And so yeah, it's just helpful just to sit in that relationship, but even more so just to be able to recognize those voices at that time when it comes, especially when we're deciding something. I think a key thing too is, I mean, discernment usually has something to do with the future or like something that we want, but we can't get there unless we go through the present. You know, like so often like a temptation is, okay, I want this, this good or this thing in the future. And then we kind of jump over what's happening now. And so it's super important just to recognize what's happening in your heart, but even more so like the example you're talking about, right? Um, where there's a girl and like all these signs line up, like exterior signs. And even we're praying about it, you know? 
And it seems clear that the Lord is inviting you, at least from once again, what you've discerned or what you, what you experience to step into this relationship. And maybe that's what the Lord is inviting you to do. But maybe like you're attaching, okay, this is the girl I'm going to be married to for the rest of my life. And maybe the Lord's just saying, hey, this is the next step I want you to take to step into this relationship. And then you just, you keep taking those, those steps until maybe it's revealed more clearly that, oh, you know what? This isn't for me right now. And the Lord's kind of helping you maybe discover something more about your heart to help prepare you for your future wife. But like, if you're stuck on that, this is the one for me, as opposed to asking the Lord once again, in that conversation, in that relationship, in that coming back to him and saying, okay, Lord, what is it that you want now that I've taken the step? What's the next step forward? Um, do I continue this way? And I think if there's a constant conversation, you sometimes fall or you, yeah, you don't fall into that pitfall of the Lord wasn't with me in this because he's constantly with us. And there's not a moment in time where we can't be with him because he's loved us first and because he's calling us to something greater than what we even can imagine. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's super important to, to recognize and just to sit in that relationship and just to have it to be the supporting and everything that we rely on, especially when we're, we're thinking about something in the future. Mm -hmm. And so. I, I think a natural question is, okay, <clears throat> it's important to, and it's possible to recognize the voice of the Lord, right? <laughs> So how do, how do we do that? And I think a couple of ways are certainly um, rooted in scripture. Like Jesus reveals so much about his heart and his, 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 his voice through scripture. So familiarity with scripture is great. I, I think that experience and discernment and just in life are extremely helpful. Um, Cause I just do think that there's like, in our, in our world, in our particular work, we do a lot of like work, we do a lot of working with discernment. Our own life had like very extensive discernment. And so part of it is you like to pick up patterns and you kind of pick up. And even I think um, as, and it's possible and, and it's a little bit abstract, but like you do just get a sense of like, here's like an accusing spirit or here's yeah, like, totally. the, here's, here's the Lord or not. And mm -hmm. here's like, here's, here's freedom and here's being pushed by fear and, and things like that. Like, um, which is, if you will, um, part of the gift of like a Catholic discernment is that, there are people who have been invited to kind of live and swim in these waters for like if as their job essentially, right? Who are there to help you navigate and understand the voice of the Lord. Um, I, I want to talk about and maybe focus on a little bit more of um, what can be some things that we like kind of get few, confused about regarding hearing the Lord's voice. But as far as like what else we need to have in place to help us kind of grow and actually hearing his voice, do you guys have anything to add? Oh, I think you said it. I mean, I think I, mean, I think these were the, the simple building blocks. I mean, you could you could have like a series of podcasts just on Catholic discernment. So we're we're going to stay focused. Okay. But I think we got the major pieces out there. Sure. Yeah. Maybe maybe to add. Sorry. Also, like if I'm in a conversation, somebody like like, what's your what's your husband say, or what's your wife say, mm -hmm. or what's your mom say, what's your dad say? Also, sort of like listening to and getting insight from those who know you best mm -hmm. is also really helpful for discernment. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to say, just in reference to what you previously said, um, just recognizing fears and naturally like what's going on in your heart is super important, which sometimes we could kind of gloss over or we put maybe too much emphasis on. Um, but just, yeah, this this decision scares me, you know, and I'm afraid if, you know, like whatever these things are, um, if it's a new job or if it's like a particular person or relationship I'm entering into, it's okay. Like, okay, recognize that. Okay. There's fear because I don't know a lot of these things. And just, once again, place that before the Lord in relationship and, and invite him there. Um, but maybe just kind of, it's kind of difficult, but the segment that say, okay, just to recognize that as you enter into the discernment, but to not let that be the discernment, if I could put it that way. Mm -hmm. But it's just, yeah. And I, and I just want to reiterate the fact that discernment's not like a, like a slot machine. Like I just don't go to prayer and be like, all right, good Lord, I want this answer. Mm -hmm. You know, am I supposed to marry this girl? Well, it doesn't work like that. Like sometimes we want these kind of, um, we want to have these experiences in prayer where it's just like, Jesus gives me a voice. I hear the booming voice, the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the heavens open up and I, you know, I receive my vocation there. It's the incarnational reality of the journey of, I have to like, I have to walk and I have to walk in faith and walk in trust and walk in confidence. And I think any vocation, there's a time of dating. There's a time of discerning in religious life. You have to go visit. You have to, you have to, you have to experience it. And then the Lord will, the Lord will open up a space here. That's how it works. And again, it's not, discernment's not like a mathematical equation. And so I think that journey is, or the invitation, excuse me, is, is for people, especially with bigger decisions about mm -hmm. the future, 
you have to say yes to this to this to this invitation to follow Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And when the apostles said yes, they didn't know what was going to happen, but it was this daily experience of trusting the one who's in front of you and and letting go kind of yourself and your own and your own kind of plans. Um, so it, it's in the journey, and it's not it doesn't happen in our own time usually, mm-hmm. but just also some things to keep in mm-hmm. keep in mind, right? And I think that's we're gonna. I think I kind of want to like come back to that in a second. One of the, I think, a pr- there's a lot of ways now in which what we can be hearing and and responding to that actually is not the Lord's voice, right? And can get us in trouble because it's very easily confused. And there's a lot of it, and there can be, it can be fear, it can be I don't know, just general kind of discomfort or emotions or desolation, things like that. One of them I certainly think is. For me, like for me and my discernment, like and and when I'm talking to people, desire is really important. Like, what do you want? Mm-hmm. What do you want? And I remember meeting with Father Glenn. Like, so like, what do you want? It's like, I want to be a saint. It's like, no, like, what do you want? Like, let's go, let's go like, <laughs> Tell deeper. Me what like, you want. Like, no, I want to, you know, I want to pray mm-hmm. and I want to be a priest. And I want to be a missionary. Like, mm-hmm. and you know, for me again, it was like part of my. I remember very clearly, like going on a date, going home, watching a John Paul II documentary, and like crying at the John Paul II <laughs> documentary. It's like I just can't. I can't. Um, <laughs> pretend like I don't have like my deepest desires not to be a priest. So it is an important thing, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure. But, de- but desire is not equal to the will of God. It's important. And sometimes we get that confused. And I'm going to use language that I think actually a lot of Catholics are going to be on board on, but we we may not realize how we do it. In in the world right now, there's like this, this use of my truth. Have you heard of this? Like, well, my truth is this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and basically what it's saying is like, here's, here's, here's my experience or here's my observation or here's my judgment. And it's just, you have to accept it. Right. And for most people with like, kind of like a, a I could maybe a Catholic kind of sensibility. It's like, well, uh, I mean, can we talk about that? Is there any space for like a conversation? Is there any space? And it can, they can be in a lot of different things. Right. Whereas Catholics, we have like my experience, you know, Hey, so my, Hey, my experience of what you said was this. Um, and then that gives, it gives some space for another person to speak in sometimes. And I would say actually often, um, in our discernment of marriage or of a particular partner or of a religious community, it's like, no, like my truth is that God is calling me here. Mm -hmm. My truth is God is calling me to be a sister in this community because I want it. And like the desire is imp- good, and but we want to test it and pursue it and open up to the conversation and the discernment from the other end. But if we hold on to this desire as if this is infallible uh, evidence that God is calling me to this, if it doesn't work out, um, there's going to be like a lot of consequences and our capacity to trust God, to trust others, to trust the church um, is going to be kind of endangered. So do you, do you guys want to help nuance that or, or share anything about that idea? Does that make sense? Does oh, it? it does. Yeah. I mean, it totally makes sense. And it's, it's a tricky place, right? Because this happens often where um, I was just, I was, um, I was just kind of sitting with the, the, the comment of like, no, this is, this is my vocation. This is my truth. I've, we've experienced that in our own journey with, with young, young men discerning religious life or actually in religious life. And I think what we just want to make sure is that, um, like where, where's our focus, right? Like our, like religious, or excuse me, the, the gift of vocation, particularly when we're, when we're discerning vocation, it's, 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 we gotta be super careful because it's always received, you know, like these, like my spouse is a gift from God. It's not something like, I'm just not going like, I'm not, I don't have to force it. I don't have to figure it out. I don't have to, I don't have to find the perfect guy or the perfect girl. And sometimes I think we do that where it's like, it's all about me. And then somehow God's going to come bless this. And I'm just going to kind of blame Providence. Like I found her, you know? So I think we just got to be careful that, that when we're for a variety of different reasons, we could just be self-focused and we're afraid. And so then we come to religious life. No, no, I got to do this. This is, this is my vocation but it's, it's all kind of, you're the reference point or it's what you desire. And it's like, but hey, what's God doing here? Like, are you, are you receiving this freely? Like, are you, is there joy, right? Uh, Father Glenn talks about that young man who, who just was on a vocation visit and who, who just said, no, Father, like, this is what I need to do to be holy. Like, I have to be here. And Father Glenn's like, well, let's, let's talk about that. Like, what, have you ever thought about marriage? Nope. Like, and he was just like, no, this is what I got to do. 
And Father Glenn's like, whoa, like you, you're, you're very much in control here. And when you, when you say yes to God's will, it's, a, it's an explosion of joy in your heart. And there's a freedom that, mm-hmm. wow, Lord, I feel like I'm following you and I'm receiving this gift. And he's like, you're just, I just don't experience that. Like you need, like, have you ever thought about or been open to marriage? And he's like, well, I did have this girlfriend. And he started talking about this girl and he like totally lit up. Oh, yeah. And he's like, totally just had this like flood of emotion. And Father Glenn's like, you need to go get married. Like, like this is not, like you don't have to force this. And so I think what's, we just gotta be careful of is if we get caught in ourselves and what we want or what we think, and there's very little room then to live in a freedom and a joy of receiving the gift. Um, I mean, just maybe that's just, a, again, a place to start because I we see that often. Yeah. And even in that example, and I think in general too, right? Um, Once again, we can make it our thing, but we need to have somebody else to help us see it, you know, see it practically. So even in in a relationship, you're not in a relationship by yourself, like in a marriage relationship, you need somebody else. And so um, going back to your reference in the beginning of the episode, particulars and patterns, right? Mm. (laughs) You're referencing people, but I think in a real way, like God calls us to something, especially like our deep desires, like, okay, I want to be a priest. I want to be married. Um, and there's been a pattern that maybe you don't realize yet, but there's a pattern that's kind of been set because he's created our hearts for him and fulfillment in the way that he best sees it. Right. And so sometimes we can be stuck on a particular thing without once again, inviting the Lord to kind of, okay, show me, show me what it is that I really desire. And just, yeah, just once again, paying attention to the patterns that happen. And so like if you're consistently crying at JP2 videos and then, you know, but no, no. My, and you're like well, drawn, drawn to pray more. <laughs> yeah, and you're, you're like, you're going more, deeper. <laughs> but like you you have this desire, this, no, but I'm going to get married. You know, like, yeah. okay, let's let's take a step back and let's see what has been the pattern here. Right. And if it's a consistent thing of, well, I think that once again, maybe, maybe I, I might like being a priest or whatever it is. Because once again, what could get introduced is a fear of, well, I won't be able to be fulfilled at the deepest level with with somebody else or I have these other images or dreams that I think would be better for me. Why don't you just, once again, in freedom, okay, Lord, um, I'm gonna invite you into this and just see what happens, you know, just see what happens. And um, and I think it's a real thing when we have somebody else that we're able to bounce these ideas off of. Once again, if it's a priest um, or if it's somebody that's, that's walked in these ways in a real way, like it's a wonderful thing just to have, just hold up the mirror, just say, hey, look, this is what what's happening. It's what I see. What I see, yeah. And this is even oftentimes like in a discussion or even you could check for yourself. Like how excited you get when talking about one thing as opposed to the other thing. Like it's a practical thing where like I get super excited about talking about um, the vocation of marriage. And I'm like, yeah, but yeah, God's called me to be a priest. You know, like- It's like a burden. <laughs> like, well, I guess so, you know. Like, okay, mm-hmm. like what is that? <laughs> what and, is that? And if there's a, a real desire from the Lord that he wants to bless and, and bring forth, like, okay, like let's sit there with that, that particular desire, but even more so just look at the patterns. And so, um, yeah, I just think that's a part of it too. Yeah. It's a, it's like sometimes I have to be careful with it because sometimes I can almost I feel like very confident in discernment. It can almost be like a parlor trick. Like mm-hmm. in in forty five seconds, I'm going to help you discern <laughs> your vocation. Right. But there is something that comes up all the time in like particularly with uh like college age young adult women in some sort of ministry is their whole lives they've desired to be like married and be moms. Mm-hmm. And then somebody asks them like, well, like have you discerned religious life? And then it like throws them on this like tailspin. Like, well, I haven't. Like, how do like do I need to discern it? What do I need to do? Do I need to like break up with my boyfriend? Because I never really asked. It's like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. First of all, like, do you have any desire for religious life? No. <laughs> have you like? Do you have any desire to be married and be a mom? Yeah. Has that like? Has that been? Yeah, my whole life. Okay. Well, how about? Okay, Lord. Here's what <laughs> we're gonna do, there. Lord. Right um, there, <laughs> Lord. I want to be married. This is what I've experienced. I, this is the situation. I'm gonna pursue this. Like, if you want me to call, go somewhere else. Like, you're gonna have to be super obvious and like, hey, just I want you to be free just to pursue this, right? Like, discern vocation, discernment done. We, you know, <laughs> like, but there, it is like it's like, and there is a place for duty and there is a place for, but overall, it's saying like vocation. Like, there's freedom, and so if like you're really unhappy and really kind of and you're fear driven yeah. and forced like, mm-hmm. hold on, like, let's just chill out for a second. Totally. Yeah. Um, okay. A, a second, th- or uh, I don't know, um, second thing as if we've only talked about one thing up to this point. Um, some examples of, of discernment of like letting kind of how we discern as a church, like letting things happen. Right. You know, I think we, um, there's, an, there's father Glenn has this idea and I think it's, um, I, I kind of clever. It's like, uh, d- 
this, like you're you're driving at night and like you got your your lights on. It's like the only way to see like you know the rest of the road is like to keep driving to move the car. Mm. And there is something about that. It's like okay, I have a sense that this is the road God's calling me to. This is a person I'm supposed to be dating. This is a I'm a religious order I'm start to be pursuing. But how do we actually discern whether or not this is God's will for me? Is we we move the car, we do something, we make visits, we go on dates, things like that. You don't you don't assume that you know the full road and destination right when you get started. You have to give uh, life some time. And, um, you know, for example, okay, we have uh, Born a Fire. Born a Fire did like really, really well. And so for me, it might seem like, okay, interesting. This seems to be disproportionately fruitful. Like this seems, you know what I mean? It's like this was a thing, but also kind of like disproportionately. But that's how I see it. Like <laughs> no, we, yeah, yeah. we gave we gave loaves and fishes and, you know, the Lord did something. 4,000 people were fed in some ways, literally, right? As far as like, that's like a, number um anyway but um <laughs> but um but it's like okay interesting is this is there a next step on this and so the next thing is we like reach out to a couple of publishers whoever like hey do you, this is what happened would you want to partake in like another thing right because we can't do it on our own sure if no doors open it's like okay lord this is what this was the thing okay we're grateful if some other doors open it's like okay we're going to keep walking on it but like you te- mm. you test it right and you don't assume from the get-go, this is a, this is the next huge ministry thing. It's going to save the church and it's going to save men. And Father Innocent's finally going to be thrown as the, the master formator of all of the world. You guys are crazy. Um, you guys are crazy. And so, or or you know, it's like okay, I meet um, I meet the I meet the girl with the rose brooch after I finished my Saint Therese meeting. Time out. What's a brooch? Sorry, I'm un, I'm uneducated like you. It's a little it's like pin. A pen. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Okay, sweet. You ask her on a date. <clears throat> First step, you ask her on a date. See mm-hmm. if she says yes. She if she might, says no. She might say no. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, there's a father, one of our priests has an idea, like our first obedience is to reality. So if like you ask somebody on a date and they say no, if you want to be in the, the choir director and you can't sing, you got to yeah, be I'm obedient totally, to reality, right? I can't be in the choir. I can't. I shouldn't. You go, But you go on some dates and it's like, okay, if it's, if, if you like her, she likes you, you, you know, like, you keep going. And then if eventually if you, you know, propose, she says, yes, okay, let's, we're going to keep yeah. going, you know? And, and it is, so religious life, I have a call. I'm going to make a visit. I'm going to have some conversations. Oh, they invite me to come and join postulancy. I'm going to, and there's a reason, right? There's a reason that there's dating. There's a reason, at least in the U S I don't know, most ice in the U S I don't know if it's all or all the church. Like if you want to get married, your marriage prep has to be at least six months. Mm-hmm. Like we need, like we're, we don't just go from first date to, marriage because discernment takes time in religious life has it's developed it's like before our guys make final vows there are what six years basically of formal formation a couple years before that because the understanding of the church is that authentic discernment like takes time Mm -hmm. you know um so i just think those are great examples and i think what it what it kind of makes pretty clear for us is that is that there's discernment in again just not doesn't just involve me but other people and it keeps us in reality and it, it keeps us humble right like when i if you if you're going to date someone and it you you start dating you date for six months and and then she's she's like you know i just don't think it's a good fit it's just not working well it, it keeps you humble and trusting but it also it also means that you have to it's not god's often doing a lot more than we realize right so what does god want for like this is god just i broke up with my girlfriend and now my life is shattered and ruined. And like, what's that mean? Like, does God not care for me? Is he, do I not have a vocation? Like, cause that's, I think what's, what you're getting at sometimes is when we go, we don't have the proper discernment. Then suddenly I broke up with my girlfriend who I thought I was in love with and gonna marry. And now I'm like, wow, God, like, who are you? Like, you, you just did this to me and I, now I'm hurt and I don't trust you and I feel alone. Is that like, is that God's will? Is that God's desire for me? Right? So I think what, what we always want to have a posture of is, again, if we say yes to reality and, and where we don't have control and God does, and this, I mean, if you're dating, this, this woman gets to discern as well, right? So she, you guys are walking this journey together and she's going to, she's going to God's going to create a space for you guys to keep falling in love and, and saying yes to your vocation or discernment kind of works and says, you know what? Like, I don't think this is, this is for me. And I think it just, I, the question we want to ask, especially if, when there's struggle and suffering and it doesn't turn out like we think it should, 
is, okay, Lord, like I was dating this girl and I thought I was in love, but she, but she said no, or she broke up with me. Okay. But Lord, what are you doing here? Like I, this is really hard and this is devastating, but you know, what, what are you doing? Like what, what I'm listening, I'm open. How are you wanting me to grow? Right? Like these experiences are really important. When you do get rejected, it, it, it can form your character. It can help you trust. It can suffering, suffering God uses if we allow him. So if we don't swing to the other end of like getting upset and rejecting and, and letting it kind of pull our life into a tailspin, if we just say, okay, Lord, like, what do you use? Like, what are you doing here? That's a part of the discernment. It's not just like, oh, it's not this girl, but what are you, Lord, what are you doing? What are you trying to show me? How you, how do you want me to grow? Because then it forms us because then if I'm really called to marriage, when the next person comes, I have grown a lot and the suffering has formed me. And so instead of, instead of rejecting it, um, a part of discernment is, is, is you even using the suffering to be, to, to be formed and to grow. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Sorry. Uh, the, yeah, the articulation of the question is important. What are you doing here, Lord? You know? Um, cause once again, it's not an isolation that we do these things. And I think in a real way, I've read this somewhere and who was the saint that always quotes, we always quoted St. John Newman, somebody, anyway, but when doors are closed, it doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> that that's the end. But there, if we turn around, there's probably a bunch of doors that are open. Like when the Lord closes a door, it's not like the end of whatever it is that we're discerning. Maybe he just wants us to walk through a different door. So maybe it just looks differently than what we first imagined. It might hurt. It yeah. But <laughs> yeah. But to acknowledge that and just to say, once again, what are you doing here, Lord? Um, what do you desire? Like, what's your plan in this? And, um, and it's once again in that freedom of recognizing, okay, the Lord has something here for me. Um, sitting there and recognizing it, but then taking once again, the next step forward. And it's true. Like it just takes time. Like it takes time to figure out, okay, this is the person for me. This is the religious community for me. Cause even in like in those years, there are ups and downs, ups and downs. And, and yet, and just, I guess maybe the caveat or just the thing to avoid is just like everything I do is the will of God, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, cause okay, I'm just going to take the next step here and whatever it is. But once again, it's just like, the reality of, okay, have I, can I look back and see there's a consistency with which I'm being invited to act? Um, like, let's say for instance, I, I, yeah, anyway, I feel called to marriage and all of a sudden I just get this idea in my mind that, you know what, I'm called to be a missionary in Antarctica because people over there need Jesus. Okay. That's true. Are you the person though? <laughs> you know, like, and so like you start moving and then you get frustrated. We're like, this was pretty clear to me in, in like in my mind or whatever. And you start taking steps to that and like everything is frustrating for you. Like, okay, God, why are you banning me? No, no, no. Like, let's take a step back once again. But yeah, just like you said for the example where, okay, has this been a consistent thing on your heart? Has the Lord brought you there? Um, and if you if it hasn't been, like, why are you moving in that direction? And so, um, but just to avoid just the, the running into something and making sure that, oh, no, this is the will of the Father because I'm doing yeah. it. Therefore, it has to be. And so. And you kind of over like over spiritualize things. Like right, right. You make a, the guy's like discerning everything he does, but probably mm-hmm. just like, Go take a nap. Right. Like right. everything doesn't have the, the over, yeah. there's particular experience that I have with that, but just mm-hmm. guys want to like blame everything on God, mm-hmm. you know, just. Yeah. yeah and, and that's what I kind of want to, I don't know if it's the, the right language is like come to the defense of God. That's not, that's not <laughs> it. But, but I do think that the Lord gets blamed for a lot which is falsely attributed to him just because it doesn't come from a properly formed understanding of how discernment works and God's will works and his voice works. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, but also I want to kind of come together another kind of uh, point to it, but there is, um, yeah, there, there is, there is this, there's a healthy distrust, a healthy, it could be unhealthy, but there's a healthy distrust of my discernment. Or like, it's just basically, we, we're not, we don't, we don't, we're not the Pope. You know what I mean? We're, we're not infallible. We don't, we don't um, bestow upon ourselves the absolute like uh, word on whether or not this is God's will or not, you know? And, and we just want to be kind of careful with that. And so we do, we, we, we listen, we take into, we, we, we get formed by really kind of immersing ourselves in the word of God in the church. We take into account other people's advice. We pay attention to our desires um, we let time happen. We kind of make the next best steps. Um, and then we kind of see, and if doors do close, 
it can be hard at first and it can be like, a, there can be a grieving season, but hopefully the movement is okay, Lord. Like, what are you doing? Thank you for like being clear that you're not, this isn't the path for me. So I trust that there's something else somewhere else you're leading me. Um, but what we want to avoid is something like this. And it, I think it happens. I'm going to use St. Francis. I think it happened with some like scripture commentaries in the last, you know, whatever it was 30 years ago or something like that. Or it can happen like with St. Francis, right? We get a couple of classes on St. Francis and his writings or, or biographies. And it's like, well, no, this, didn't, this, this probably didn't really happen. This probably didn't really happen. This probably didn't really happen. And it's like, okay, well, can I know, can I know anything about St. Francis? Like, can I read anything? You know what I mean? Or, and cause that sounded like there was such like a, a kind of a breakdown of scripture at some point that I was like, okay, like, is any of this the word of God? And it's like mm -hmm. that it was just like, to, was it the historical critical method just taken, yeah, just taking, yeah. taken <clears throat> to the extreme? And then people are like, uh, what do I do? And that's what I, 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 I want to avoid. It's just like, okay. Um, there are some components and there are some factors and it is, there's like a lot going on here of discerning the Lord's voice. Um, but it doesn't mean we're like paralyzed before and, and like, and, and maybe one example, which, which helped me a lot. And then I just really asked for you guys to kind of help fill it out as well is again, and I've shared this story before, but I was, I'm in Honduras. I am, uh, whatever. I'm like 28, second year of vows, third year of vows maybe. And I'm in charge of the food kind of who we're giving food to. Right. And so these, the kind of the baseline, cause it's of the poverty level there is like basically single moms with, I think it was like four or more children. And so they would come and we do an interview and, and, you know, it's like everyone's in need. And I remember feeling like, okay, I'm like discerning whether or not like this people, people are in need. And it's like, I just felt like for a while after I like felt such like anxiety and stress of like, I don't want to get this wrong. Um, and then I went on a retreat and actually silent retreat, had this experience of God being father and, and like in the real stuff of the world. And so what ended up happening is like, okay, Lord, I trust that you have called me here with my own that actually, you know me, you know, my limited Spanish, you know, my, my judgment, you know my, who I am. And so what I'm going to do, Lord, is I'm going to be a good steward of, of what I have. I'm going to ask the questions. I'm going to do my best. I'm going to make an interview. I'm going to do the interview. I'm going to make a decision and I'm going to trust it to you. Lord. Okay. Lord, here's, you've called me, you've put me in this situation. This is my judgment. Lord, if I'm like wrong, like I, I just like, I know that you are good and you are father and that like you, you are alive and at work in the world. And so if like, I'm wrong, I'm going to ask you to like, provide and to bless it. Like if I'm right, I'm gonna ask you to bless it, right? And there is something of that, of our discernment. It's like, okay, we, we take into account the word of God. We take into account our own desires. We listen to other people. We're good stewards of what we've been given. And then we kind of keep making the next best, best steps, trusting it to God and trusting that like he's in us, he's in it with us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have a similar story where, um, I think it's the second day, or maybe even third day I was a postulant. So like fresh in, it's like September, the Postal Center, September 8th. And so like September 11th or 12th, whatever it is. And um, and I was, it was a Friday night. I remember this. And I remember like what I used to be doing on Friday nights or like what I could be doing. And I'm looking around. I'm just in this chapel full of grown men with bare feet and they smell and it's hot and it's summertime. It's loud outside. I'm like, Lord, what's going on? Like, why am I even here? Like, you know, why? <laughs> you know, and so like really wrestling with- this There's a postulant last week or when you were a postulant? <laughs> this is when I was a postulant. <laughs> back in 2008. But um, yeah, but it's really bringing those to the Lord. Like, Lord, you have to make this clear. Like mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've basically, I've taken the steps to be here. And right now this feeling is like, I don't want to be here. This isn't attractive to me. Like just, you have to make this clear to me. I'm putting it, basically I'm putting it in your, in your uh, court. And the next day was Bishop Manny's uh, Episcopal ordination. And um, my father, your classmate, he gives me a little pamphlet on Pierre Toussaint. And he goes, hey, bro, um, I want you just to read this, you know, because it's good for you. And, and maybe, you know, just pray about this. And so I read it and like, basically the Lord was answering my prayer. And so mm -hmm. I read the, the story of Pierre Toussaint and just my prayer, like the voice of the Lord in prayer was like, this is who I've called you to be. Like, do you trust mm -hmm. me? You know, so like saying there will be times where you'll feel the same exact way <laughs> you did in, in the adoration time where like, this doesn't make sense, but do you trust me? And at that moment I said, okay, yes, Lord, I trust you. Which once again, even getting there, I had to have previous steps of trusting him, you know? And it was just such a free moment. And I knew that, okay, anything else that happens, like I have, I'm with somebody, like I'm, I'm in a real discernment with him. And so it's something that if we're able just to let go and trust and just to invite the Lord to that place of, okay, Lord, this is where I'm at, but I need you to speak. And then pay, to, pay attention to external things you know like once again somebody gives you something which is precisely an answer to it okay 
I'm gonna take the next step. I'm gonna choose this name. I'm gonna choose this patronage. I'm gonna choose whatever it is that the Lord is inviting you to choose. Choose it in freedom, knowing mm-hmm. that he has the best, like the best intentions for you, but even more so that he desires your heart to be complete and to be full and to be joy filled because he's created it for you. So Yeah, it's awesome. Um with both your examples, you guys, there was a point where you guys just had to like speak what's true. You know, so you went back to prayer and like, okay, Father, you are good, you provide, like, and you had this, you have these litanies of of, of just letting the Lord proclaim what's true in our lives. And I think that's a big part of discernment as well, is that when we get so confused, we need the Lord or someone who's guiding us to proclaim what's true, right? And I have this experience all the time with the postulants where they, 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 we get, we do struggle and we can, we get, can get pulled into this, to this kind of blindness of, of, you know, thinking it's one way or is God saying this? And, and so they start, you, you kind of start speaking and, and, and you, you can, there's like a spirit of discouragement or spirit of sadness or spirit of like, of anxiety or struggle. And then they start saying stuff that's just not true. Like, oh man, like, I'm just never going to figure this out. Or if it, like, I just don't belong here. Or like, I'm just, I'm just feel so lonely. And I'm just like, whose voice is that? Like, it's like, it's not true. <laughs> you know? And so you, then you allow the Lord to start speaking truth into someone's life and discernment kind of breaks open. Like, whoa, like, no, that God will provide. He is good. He is here. He is more powerful than my loneliness, my anxiety, right? Or my limitations of being being fed or my desire to, to just get away from these weird brothers. <laughs> you know, like if we allow the Lord to be more powerful and, and to enter the place of, of this relationship, then he can speak to, what's, he speak to us what is true. And these are moments of breakthrough and discernment when we can just kind of evangelize ourselves or tell us what's true. And then we can start to see clearly. And I think that's, this is the moments we wanna have more and more is that we, we begin to understand, okay, like what's happening right now in my heart? And I can take the next best step in, to live in what's true. Then you can, we can re-engage life saying, okay, but God's good. Like vocations is not a game. He's not trying to hide it from me. He's not holding out on me, right? Or, you know, I broke up with this girlfriend and it, it really hurts me, but, but like God doesn't, want to hurt me, mm-hmm. right? You need to like tell ourselves the truth. And so then we can stay in the reality of relationship that we have a good God who, want, who wants to love us. Mm-hmm. I'm going to bring it to a close. We kind of run out of time a little bit. And um, I think, I think, again, I think the, first of all, like the good news to, to uh, quote Father Pierre Toussaint before mm-hmm. the microphones were on is that the Lord is speaking and he wants to speak. And if we're, we're talking about patterns throughout history, he has spoken to his people. That is like something the Lord does. You're going to bring up Samuel before he... Oh, you want me to? No, 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 no. no, 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 no that's what he's going to No, that's okay. what he's going to do. But if you want to hear that, yeah. <laughs> if you want to hear you were talking about bringing it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's also the reality that part of our discernment, we just don't discern in a vacuum and we're not like, um, we're not little like, Vatican cities unto ourself with like mm. our, we're not little holy seas all to ourselves, Right. <laughs> you know, like I'm the, awesome. I'm, I'm the Pope in a dice or a church of one, you know, cause our discernment in our life, it involves particularly in vocation, other people, other communities it involves, uh, kind local, of, local superiors, local superiors. It involves life unfolding <laughs> where we can better understand our own desires and our own capacities. All that's true. Um, and we have some certain limitations and I think like in my, I'm just trying to get like, because I do feel, again, I do feel uh, rather confident in generally discerning God's voice or how to make the next best step in it. I mm. also think that, you know, we, because I talked about like a healthy kind of distrust of yourself, like we, we're probably going to have like some gaps, but not like absolute gaps in our discernment, right? Like it, there was something that came up the other day. It's like, I want to do it. I think I'd be good at it. I feel strongly about it. But also like, I, I understand that sometimes like, just because I want to do something, I say yes to it and I shouldn't because I don't actually have the capacity. Like I overcommit, right? Mm-hmm. And so I have to understand, like I have a bit of a blind side for overcommitting because I like to do stuff, right? But, but that's good discernment. you like, you knew you're like, wait, let's put on, let's just get this out here. Right. So it's like, mm-hmm. And so like for some people, it's like, okay, you know, maybe, maybe there's like a blind spot towards this thing or towards that thing or towards, you know, like this thing. I'm I'm trying to think about it without getting too particular. It's like, I'll use an occasion to sin. Like maybe, you know, you keep falling into sin with your boyfriend or girlfriend and it's like, 
you like everyone could say like this situation right here like it always it always leads the pattern is you're always going to lead the same place but there's like some sort of gap like where you're not really willing to admit that like that's like it's a thing that's a thing for you and it's like so we we can have like some particular gaps you mm-hmm. know um but it's not because the good news like, we'll all have some blind spots but it's not we're in absolute darkness mm-hmm. you know yeah, and, so and that's part of what the church and reality and other people and letting things time is to fill in some of those blind spots to let the light of life and of reality to sort of come into those. So we see the picture. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. I just want to follow up with what Father BT said. This is my last thing. There's real fruits, right? Mm-hmm. So there is, there is like peace. You use mm-hmm. peace. Galatians 5, there are fruits of the spirit, right? That are, are, that are to help our discernment. When the Holy Spirit is, in, is, is acting in our lives, there are real fruits, mm-hmm. right? So sometimes, which is good to know, like if, if there's concrete decisions in vocation or, or there's just decisions, the life decisions, right? If I'm experiencing love, joy, peace, patience, chastity, kindness, like all these different things. Okay. Like, let's just take another step. Mm-hmm. Right. And so the, the, the church cares for us there. Yeah. They're real experiences of the Holy spirit. And I think if we just keep it simple like that, it, it can help us take right. steps. If you're, yeah, go ahead. No, it's just, um, even simpler. Rafferty talks about this all the time. Sorry, father Rafferty. You're good. You're good. <laughs> um, but just that, yeah, just fall in love with Jesus. Like, cause oftentimes you could discern things and that becomes the thing and you lose focus on the relationship. Yeah. And so he says oftentimes telling seminarians who are discerning or whatever it is, just, just fall in love with Jesus and everything else will fall into place. <laughs> just fall in love with Jesus. And so I think it's, sometimes it could be looked at, oh, that's simplistic, but it's, it's really true though. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. if you fall in love with him, if you listen to his voice, or if at least you present your desires to him and, and you speak to him, things will become clear in the future. Yeah, it's so. beautiful. Jesus says like, I am the way, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's with us on the way and yeah. on the journey. And, and we don't want to take the dignity out of the journey by being so focused on mm-hmm. whatever the end is. Cool. Um, hopefully that was, it's hopefully that didn't like open up a whole bunch of, I don't know, windows and doors of stuff for people. That's like, okay, what do I do? Well, I, I think you let it, you let it well. I think we had a really particular question. We mm-hmm. kept general enough. I just think, yeah, I think it was solid. Yeah. So God speaking, you can hear something you can't hear. You don't have absolute clarity that there's actual proper form to Catholic discernment. Mm-hmm. All right. And there's a lot of good resources out there. I mean, right. the church has a lot of resources yeah. um, that you, I mean, you could look at just Catholic discernment. Yeah. Uh, Father Tim Gallagher has a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Just the fundamentals are just good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would say, yeah, I would say this is part of a conversation. This isn't meant to be the whole thing. Totally. I really feel strong. I have a video on, I think they called it how to discern pretty much anything on Ascension. I feel lays Come some good on. principles. Oh, good. They named it. Relax. Oh, got master discerner over here. <laughs> former of all men. Just this oh guy. God. Just this guy over and here. And, Can you're just, <laughs> and you're just cool. You are just cool. This guy. You're just cool. Can we please just make sure everybody knows that I did not name myself the former of, Formator of all men. Is that what you, you said, said? You said, I'm quote, the he-man of discernment <laughs> slash mastering. There's nobody fortune. greater. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of weird, but you said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what to do with you. I don't know. We uh, miss you, Father Angelus. He'll be back. Do we? No, we do miss you. Um, quick, let's, let's do a quick shout out. We have a lot of shout outs to do based on our time in Lafayette. We've just been on the road and people are, love the podcast. So you just want to shout them all out. I think I want to shout out Father Josh. We were, we're at Christ the King, LSU, Father nice. Josh Johnson, Father Andrew. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Champions. It's really. <laughs> Absolute champions. It's re- and Father Chester Arsenault, who was down in Lafayette at, at St. John's, the uh, St. John the Evangelist, the cathedral. It was such, it's so good to be with just like really, really good priests. Mm-hmm. So really good, good priests. So good. And, um, yeah, so really grateful to the Lord for that. I'm really grateful to IPF. A lot of these guys are running in and out of the doors of IPF. Like, there's not much better happening in the church in America than IPF. True. It's awesome. Yeah. It. Uh, anything real quick? We got. Uh, I just want to shout out my boys at UL, particularly. Um, they're doing the Born of, Born of Fire group. I got to do it in person when I was with them. So, JB and the boys, um, God bless you guys. Great to be with you, praying for you. I'm good. No one? Right now, yeah. Cool. Thanks, Father PT. Good to have you back. Good to be back. All right. Um, We'll close in prayer. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. Jesus, we love you. We entrust our discernment to you. Help us to hear your voice. Help us to have radical confidence that you are speaking and that you are good, that you're in the details, that you are working through the church. And uh, heal. please help heal any wounds where we have been hurt by all sorts of life events on the journey, especially in discernment. We love you. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. If you want to keep supporting, pocoapoco.com 
pocopoco.org forward slash, no spiritjuice.org forward slash poco poco we got it we got, we got a it. youtube channel mm-hmm. all that and um we have a ul mug hey i think we the sticker thing didn't really work out but, but the you, mug thing <laughs> i love the mug thing we can get them on here work them in each episode we're at saint joseph's friary it's on the website if you have a college or anything that has a mug you want to send to us i would love to use it on the podcast we're gonna, gonna bring that up again next week All right, bye everybody. Peace, Peace. y'all. Poco a poco vamos a llegar. Somos peregrinos and you know that's who we are. We make our way. Hey, hey. Little by little we learn a little more each day that God is love. That life is short. That all will be well. And I know 